Well, hello, folks. Top Gun here with you, and I got a good one for you. It's just too crazy in the market for me not to come up and talk here and and do a little bit of a little bit of looking. Um, what's the big news? Oh, USDC and Dai just taking it, just taking it. Oh my. So. Yeah, let's, uh, let's have a look here. What happened? What happened? So, you know, this this is stable coins. They keep their peg. It's it's boring. They fluctuate by a fraction of a cent around a dollar. Zoom right in on it. Zoom right in and oh, okay, okay. Now there's some action. Now there's some action. As long as we're totally in the 9.9 .9 cent range. Okay, all right. That's how boring a stablecoin is while it's keeping its peg. And you can see when it's had issues before. Just losing, oh, oh, uh, not even, wow. Yeah, yeah, 9.9 .9 cents, like just a fraction. Just this little itty bitty baby fraction of it, wow. Stable coins aren't supposed to look like that. Wow. Yeah, see, see? That little dip and then wow. That's that's not even really comparable. As that dip just disappears. You're not supposed to need log <laughs> for a stable coin. This is not good. So what happened? What happened? What happened? Why is this why is this going on? Well, first off. Silvergate, okay, Silvergate Bank, boom, Thursday, bye-bye, gone, I mean, were you surprised, I know I was working a lot, but I was still tweeting, I was still tweeting, trying to get that information out, and hello, McFly, hello, they, they, we're going to stop withdrawals for anything under this for Binance, da 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 da, like SwiftBank, Silvergate, just, oh, okay. Yeah, the warning signs over a month early for the 1st of February that they were changing the withdrawal policies because they're running out of money. Like, if we have a little look at Yeah, Blackstone, default, it's a thing. Wow, they defaulted how much? Half a billion? Uh-oh, uh-oh, SpaghettiO. That's not good, okay? And am I surprised? No, because this all happened last year. Well, what do you mean it happened last year? It's happening right now. See, some people think I'm like prophetic and I can see the future. No, I just use some common sense, a bit of math, and look at cause and effect. So, we ran into all this economic trouble last year with inflation and rates going up and the amount of debt in the system. Something was gonna pop. That's kind of how this works. A credit event is coming, and no, it's still not here. All the ingredients got tossed in a pot last year. Like, dominoes starting to get tipped. And it's funny. Like, we'll, we'll say, we'll use it like a percent counter going across your computer. Do, 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 do. So many percent complete. Like, dominoes. 100 dominoes. Last year, domino 1 fell. But funny enough, until we're getting to, like, domino 25... Most people have no idea anything's going on. Until we're getting to Domino 50, over half the people still have no idea what's going on. By the time we're getting to Domino 75, Domino 80, people are catching up. We still got a bit to go to Domino 100. It's funny, uh, this has taken a lot longer than I expected. I mean, I've been doom and gloom quite a bit as one of those epic bears, because, yeah screw up there's got to be a pop and then and then things change so as this credit event happens like okay 
Alright, Silvergate was shut down, but I mean, there was notice on that, but then all of a sudden... Silicon Valley Bank just collapses on Friday. Now, the collapse of this bank was uh, over $200 billion of collapse. Oh my. Like FTX, slowly having ripples through. This is going to take a while to actually ripple through properly to everywhere through like for example the immediate ripples well USDC circle had an account with Silicon Valley Bank holding some of their reserve for USDC this scurred people so they bankrupt USDC this weekend is uh, circles had to do some withdrawal uh, freezes and trade restrictions and they are fighting for their life to keep their peg because this is all blowing air this is ripple effects the interest rates start going up the easy money stopped you can't just borrow debt more debt to pay off the old debt very very easily so you actually have to be making money and that's when the musical chairs stop and everyone starts to go well wait a minute are you actually making money and the valuations become more and more important the mania is leaving return to risk off because oh my bad news is finally rolling in as bad news you shouldn't want a fed pivot when the fed actually pivots oh my everything is so bad that if they actually start cutting rates it's not bullish it's when the real recession starts it's when the real pain in the market traditionally starts if you go back and back trust so the cutting of the rates is not a bullish event um, and everyone's going, yay, Fed pivot, but Fed pivot does not mean market's going back to good. It means market was so broken, they're desperately trying to perform CPR on it. <laughs> and that, that, uh, that would be the time to buy, and then that would be the bullish, but buying now, hoping that a Fed pivot is coming, going to make things go up even higher? That's not the way this works. Because after the Fed pivots, everyone is so scared because that was such a scary economic event. They don't want to spend money. They go into turtle mode. And risk off is the real mandate. And in order to stimulate the economy, they have to psychologically give people enough faith in it to want to go back to risk on. So there's too much risk on. We get inflation. They got to cool that off. But it seems to be so ingrained that the event that takes to psychologically cool off that risk on and the inflation is probably going to be so bad, the market will lose faith for a while. And getting that faith back, stimulating it back to get real money flowing back into assets and getting prices moving again will take time. A cycle. There are no gurus. There are only cycles. Love it, Michael. Uh, yeah, I talk, talk talk about FinTwit and Crypto Twitter quite a bit because I believe they are quite linked. So I follow the Maverick of Wall Street, Michael A. Gad, and then Richard Hart because we are all anxiously waiting. I still keep going here and hitting the refresh button and going, still V2B. Still V2B because Aragon synced all 15 stages. So our test net with the new Ethereum total format is coming it's running currently it's just still private because it's not fully set up the moment it is fully set up it will be turned over to public and we'll see the information on here I'm trying to get excited I have been beaten down by this much like you wow I never thought it would take this long and even I saw a poll you think it'll be in one week four weeks or three and my thumb immediately went for and sorry uh, one week, four weeks, or three months. And my thumb immediately went for three months. I went, whoa, whoa, whoa. Maybe a month. Like, and I, I just, I couldn't get excited, so it'll probably be here tomorrow. Because I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm getting to the point where I'm wrong about things because I'm too emotional about it. Emotions will skew unbiased opinions. So I just kind of stop caring. It'll show up when it shows up. I'm not really, really going to get excited till I go refresh this page and see that this says V3 and not V2B. When that says V3, okay, I'll get excited. Until then, eh, it's coming along. We'll see. 
And when it comes to V3, then you know I'll be coming back to the buy and burn. And I'll be setting it for PLSX. And we will be having some look at, uh, at the new numbers in the new testnet. I haven't really run any updates on this because, eh. You know, the, the, the testnet numbers... They're they're play nummy, but they're also that's that's the old test net. Like I like I think everyone gets the excitement about it when the new one comes and there's something to report on. Instead, like I'm not beating a dead horse going, Hey, look at these numbers over and over again. Are you asleep yet? I mean I know you're uh you're you're out of ant or not uh yet yeah, uh sorry, hold on. Um what is it? Uh, ambient. I know your ambient didn't come in, so you're watching my channel so you can sleep. And I'm just doing numbers over and over again. No. When there's some interesting numbers, when there's a reason to do the math, I'll do the math. But when there's not, I do have a day job. So I'm not just going to sit here and beat the dead horse about it. So again, yeah, waiting for Pulse Chain. I at least have the tab open again, checking for updates. But, well, it is what it is. So, yeah, news-wise, we have bank popping okay that's not great and then people think this is so biden tax increase or hike uh yeah 39.6 percent proposed budget for 24 uh wow do you think this is inflationary or deflationary let's play a game the government has no fiscal responsibility. They spend at a deficit always. And so when they rake tax heights, of course they pay off some of that debt. No, no, that's not how it works. When they do tax rate hikes, you know what they do. They spend more money. Oh, they just spend more. And if the government keeps spending tons and tons of money and printing money, even with rates high, if they keep doing that, do you think that's inflationary or deflationary? Making the, the Fed's putting more liquidity into the system, making the Fed's job harder. This is this is not good. This is not good. Alright, so we, we've got bank issues, we've got we've got numpty issues. Um oh my god. And then we can go on about sanctions and oil and fighting. Okay. So I have people I constantly talking about watching the commodities i think well is there any more news i should be really going over other than we're excited for pulse chain you know what maybe i should let's do some more news let's really talk about the news with each chart we're going to do this a little differently um all right so where do i want to go so we're waiting for pulse chain test net ethereum ah uh, yeah, other fun news, other fun news. Uh, help if I could spell, right? Uh, so right now, <laughs> there is, uh, if Ethereum is deemed a security by a state court, it could prompt federal regulations to act against the major crypto egg, uh, asset. Here we go. Um, so yeah, in New York, they're pushing uh, right now to make it a security and it's looking like the winds are blowing that way that's uh that's an interesting bad, bad precedent for ethereum if it goes that way it's funny um because ginsler's not reading leading the charge on this but i mean according to ginsler everything other than bitcoin is a security air might even be a security so do we really need to go there um now also, like the systemic issues, Evergrande, China's Evergrande collapse, yeah. <laughs> so Evergrande, like real estate manufacturing in China for a long time has been overinflated, uh, copying what the U.S. did, except at least the U.S. made functional, functional houses, like other estate actually worked. China's construction companies were just making shells, no elevators no stairs no plumbing no electricity in major skyscrapers like the things are just hollow cement shells and then selling these buildings as though they're fully functional 
So when the three red lines policy came in, it's caused some systemic issues. So although we have a divide away from the petrodollar, and that's a whole scarier economic situation where, okay, yeah, you, you're trying to, oh, what was it, BRICS? Yeah, the BRICS dollar or whatever. One, like you've got companies trying to accept Chinese currency where it's like, oh, they're moving away from the U.S. dollar. But the U.S. has been playing this financial game for decades and decades and decades. Um, although it looks like they're highly irresponsible, when you compare it to how China has been running their currency and their assets and their businesses over there, while well, over here is still downright responsible, smart, and uh, looks like Mr. Rogers, you know, and not the Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, China's the Wolf of Wall Street, and wall street is mr rogers if you're looking at the global economy the way we think about wall street yeah move that over to china and then so inherently that's how much better mr rogers is than the wolf of wall street if you're kind of trying to compare these ooh, who's so trustworthy where do i want to play china's bad so even with them trying to go and use that and move away from it with all of this infighting um the U.S. dollar remains strong. They're good at playing this game. Now, I, as I had said here, I was expecting this to be the round that goes here. But this is starting to look like a, oh no, a teacup reversal pattern? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Because uh, we've approached that red line, the resistance. We're getting close to it. So we're going to see whether the trend changes in the dollar. This realistically comes down to what's going to make the dollar grow up well the fed actually talking about we're gonna bring 75 basis points we're gonna bring a hundred we're gonna actually get in the driver's seat we're gonna get ahead of inflation we are gonna sow inflation who is boss we're gonna scare the market f your calls we are gonna crash everything f your savings accounts we are gonna crash everything we are gonna bail out nothing now, if they could actually hold down that rhetoric and crash the stock market for a couple months, inflation would be gone. And the dollar would be, whoa, probably make a new high above here. But for whatever reason, you know, Powell came out weeks ago, disinflation 15 times. Oh, the disinflationary profit that would be gone. Oh, my, oh, my. But, anyway... They are starting to talk 50 basis hikes. Inflation's still in the driver's seat. They've moved the target from 5 to 6% as a terminal rate. Um, this kind of stuff is going to make the dollar go up. The Fed doing their job. Uh, while they just kind of mess around, it go down. That's, that's kind of where the dollar is going. And there's been a lot of algorithmic trading all based on the dollar. But we did see some VIX spiking finally but was that it does it finish there does Monday become an epic buying day do we see some melt up action because the sentiment is so bearish this weekend that usually the group sentiment is wrong contrary indicators so I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of things shoot up and get some buy the dip action Monday that really holds ground Especially with some news and uh, other than Secretary Yellen saying stupid things, uh, we could actually see some rebounding with uh, with the Dow Jones, as it may find that as support. That previous resistance is now support, and uh, oh, yeah. Look at that. NASDAQ still flying up and above. Still holding above. Now, I, yeah, I'm still holding up and above. It's trying to see where the 200 moving is starting to curl up. The 100 is still below, but these things are showing some bottoming action that they're, uh, <laughs> the market manipulation and the ability for the market to trade based on psychology more than fundamentals is something I'm getting used to. So as much as I see the fundamentals have to play out, the psychology continues to amaze me and I'm learning not to underestimate <laughs> the market's ability to do strange things. As I watch the SPX and the SPY 
that would tell me, ouch, Kabibble, but that is quite a drop. I'm not saying we're going to recover to all-time new highs, but to put this in perspective, like if we saw a, a gap above the 200 and a close around the 50, moving average on Monday, I wouldn't be surprised. Where it goes after that for the rest of the week is going to get a feel for it based on what happens on Monday, step by step when I'm trying to look at the closer picture instead of the overall macro. But we can see like a lot of the doom and gloom bear market that I had pointed out in a trend has been broken. It's not just a wick above, but is it really broken? Like, is the bear market really over? Like, people zoom back. You know, remember, that line came down under here. And so for a while, we traded up and above over the original line but I had to extend it because of this mania peak this one then respected it but now we're over again so realistically what does that mean if I'm to think oh, we're playing a new game the rules changed the lines changed that's what that is so we changed the idea of the trend that we still I still assume you know we're in a bear market we're not heading into great things so I just have to adjust like anybody can draw lines on a chart but realize like perspective wise that I'm still holding down the fundamental that we are in a recessionary environment we are in a bear market and this has just been another epic rally like back in the summer because the market is agitated and beaten down for way too long this melt up was barely satisfactory so wham massive rally that's what happens but it's too extensive so the VIX is likely to spike again whether that's later in the week or in around April May We'll wait to be seen how the Fed comes out and talks on Monday how the markets respond but, oh, you know, Tesla not doing so good here. Um, I'm sorry I didn't come out. Basically, the mania was insane. I was hanging out with stock bros instead of crypto bros. Tesla to the moon. I'm like, oh, wow. Because they all start saying that right in here. And as soon as they all start saying that, it's like, yep, this is the end. Oh, look at that. In, outs, in, outs, and down. Wow. It's just funny to watch that stuff go and play out and Apple continually respecting the major yellow short. So if you're big tech, Apple and Ella, Apple and Tesla are correcting the downside and so is Netflix. Uh-oh. And even Smuckers is taking some punishment. Lockheed Martin's like, we don't care. They keep spending in Ukraine. So you see, there's not... Like these big... Apple makes up I don't know how much like a third of the SBX I'm making up numbers now I don't actually know the weighting but it's to give you an idea that a few companies make up large portions of these indexes and are responsible for their trading and so you look at the earnings of Apple and Tesla it's not good it's not good but and the market has had its surge but we're having a bit of a correction and the market has kind of switched mentality so normal risk off to risk on switching behaviors returning but there's still there's still a lot of excess liquidity in the system still a lot of aggregate demand and so even this you get that by the dip we could still see melt up through march the conditions are there lumber looks close enough to a bottom that people oh and i mean if a pivot's coming the housing market will start building again ahead as the uh, as they try to come out of a recession and let's have a look at gold Ooh, actual risk off look at that flight to gold okay so if we see gold continuing to go up and we see lumber start continuing to go down we've got our risk off conditions and we're not going to be looking for a favorable melt up but like with this surge it's not uncommon for a correction and to go back the other way 
So we set, might see a melt up of a week as gold corrects down and lumber corrects up. Conditions might favor risk on. And we could still see risk on conditions for the first few weeks of March here. Like, some of the worst times, worst news is best times to buy. Like, okay, a bank collapsed and Wells Fargo has some capital issues. The money is going to come. It doesn't mean that the Fed's going to cut interest rates immediately. The Fed doesn't cut interest rates, start cutting that kind of pivot until there's no more action in the economy because everybody's lost faith. Right now, everyone, they're still buying. There's still mom-and-pop investors. There's still excess liquidity. So they just have to bail out and keep fighting inflation. They can, unpopular opinion, they can bail out banks and start handing out money, FDI insurance kind of stuff, or F FCI. Oh, man, the acronyms get to me. Oh, let's Fed, maybe I should put U.S. FDIC. There we go. Yeah, I'm trying to actually do this stuff properly, so I'll actually look it up. It's FDIC insurance. It's funny how under collateralized that stuff is, but I mean, the Fed bailout's totally separate from that. The Fed won't allow a total banking system collapse, but this is one, so. A little bit of money could go out. A little bit of a bailout could go out. Because the larger banks are in better condition than the smaller regional banks this time around right now. And the regional ones can go pop and hurt a lot of America. Which will hurt the bigger banks, but they don't pop right away. It still takes months. So, they don't even necessarily have to bail out yet. The bigger banks, uh, like Wells Fargo, could have actually been a glitch. Or really like the money they were expecting to come flow through didn't but they're working on a patch and will probably come through Monday so I mean a bank collapsed surprised them okay uh, but that's not immediately the turn and pivot point like media wise the talking heads will come out and have to make some points but we could still see an actual real credit event a month later or two months later April or May um, while we still see melt-up conditions, which is insane. Does not mean I'm bullish, but I mean, it means I'm bullish. I'm so bearish, I'm bullish. I, I love this stuff. But watching oil, this also matters to me. Why do I, why, why does oil matter? Oil is inflationary indicator. A lot of products require oil, shipping, driving things around, making plastics. Oil's pretty important to the economy. Oh, and then, so, yeah, the LNG and Freeport McMahon facilities uh, been coming back, trying to get some flow back, but the SPR is heavily depleted still. And hopefully they are filling it up. We need U.S. Brent oil, really. But they're, by this price, they're trying to refill at 70. They want it down here instead of refilling here. Now this could be a bottoming effect because we see how nicely this is kind of rounding. There's still a lot of headwinds with the conflict going on, the restriction of oil coming out of Russia, and the SPR needing to be refilled. Oil could pop higher. If oil starts popping higher and it's harder for people to drive places, like we get more of an inflationary effect. Again, the Fed has to come out swinging harder this is what I'm watching for is a correction back across the 200 moving for oil because even though we've moved into a bear market for a while remember the market can only take this insanity for so long right eventually it wants a rally it needs a rally it can only stay beaten for so long so we're starting to get to that point where yeah, we've we've gotten one, two, three, four, gotten a fairly good kick off this line a bunch of times. Sooner or later, it's going to get punched through. We're going to see a massive rally in oil, I think, which means a massive rally in inflation, and the Fed has to come out harder to fight inflation. Then, as they suddenly come out with 100 basis points and get over 6% or even 7 
and then we see a credit event. Oh, could it round up like, look, my mouse is like in the middle of May over here. Draw a line, pre-line, like everyone can draw lines on a mark. But here's TA. Oh, look at that. Isn't that scary? That's inflation going up. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to leave that there for fun. I'm probably wrong, but if it follows that, I am just going to laugh so, so hard. So we're actually going to leave that there. I, I Wow. Yep, I'm leaving that there. I'm leaving that there. Natural gas. Oh, my God. Yet, natural gas, still important in case we have a really hot summer. Just because the this is, uh, yeah, LNG and Freeport McMahon, I think, if I'm saying those right. Natural gas facilities, refineries coming on, and oh, the bottleneck, the supply issue for natural gas. That was uh, tailwinds for it. Sorry, I get tailwinds. And tailwinds push you forward, head in, headwinds slow you down. So headwinds charging into it with those opening because, yeah, it takes the uh, bottleneck, which is the tailwind, away. So, yeah, ouch, natural gas, but it may have bottomed out, and if we, again, see oil and natural gas moving up together, it's inflationary. And copper, though, that gets kind of manipulated. I don't like to look at that too much, and nickel's more of a curiosity thing, not a huge indicator I follow. All right, so funny that I'm like, ah, let's have a video. Bitcoin's probably going to go to 20K. Boom, 20K. Like, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't mean to cause that. No, I didn't cause that. It was going there anyway. Bounced off the 200-day moving average, though, catching some traction. So we'll see how Bitcoin wants to continue to trade and play. But right now, I'm expecting a test back to this bull trend, and I don't expect it to hold. So 16,000 is definitely on the table again for a correction down to find around at least a double bottom. I mean, Bitcoin does that constantly. If this was the bottom, it still have to retest it. But will it stop there? Or will we go down to 14K and 12K? 12K and pray. How bad? Why do I say that now? Well... The market's had enough time. It didn't get as punished as I thought it was going to when it was getting very nastily punished back in the summer. With that understanding, some of the more extreme things are off the table. Uh, 11K and pray is such a standard thing that I hear kind of in Twitter now. I wouldn't be surprised if I see a front run at 12K. Plus, the order books start to thicken up under 15K. Like it, Once you get down to 14K, it gets harder to drive the price down. So, yeah, a front run at 12 or 13K in between these lines, causing it to go back up from here. So, let's put a squiggly line on here for fun. So, let's get some fighting up and down, up and down, and then, oh, oh okay, okay, we're going to come back up. We're going to, oh, no, 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 but we'll, we'll come back up. Oh, we didn't like this line. Well, we're gonna no we don't like that line oh 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 wait everything's okay everything's okay and then oh 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 <laughs> that was fun i'm gonna leave that there just to see what happens uh i don't think it'll really trade like that but uh, we'll see we'll see because what's really impressed me with all of this usdc hubbub crashy oh look it's fighting back again go go usdc yo i don't really care lusd and usdl those are the way to go fully backed stable coins but hex oh my cracking another segment high if we can go to over eight and a half cents we're going to test the major resistance this is some very big V3 coming. Um, buy the rumor, sell the news. So this is awesome. And I'm loving the way it surges against USDC. But wouldn't it be awesome and not unexpected? Again, here we're going to do the drawing thing. Maybe we'll pull that out too. Okay. So... 
Would it be awesome to get some fight, 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 and getting the news, getting the news. V3 is coming also at the same time that, oh, USDC is stabilizing. Everything's fine in the markets. Oh, 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 boom. While well, we're playing with V3, things are figuring out. So, I'll leave that there. We'll see what happens. <laughs> it's kind of how I'm imagining right now. And even that is only four and a half cents. That if that ends up this curve down after like as we're heading in, let me get rid of this. You can't even see the time because my picture's in front of this. But time scale wise, yeah, this is the end of April. So like, I don't know. I'm kind of curious to see right now because I'm starting to see the tea leaves are going. Yep, shapes are coming. Like hex has been trading up for a very long time. It'll need a correction. Like, that was a pretty heavy correction to the downside. And then we blasted through that resistance. So, we're going to make another top and have to come down for a correction. How far will it come? Will it hold this or will it take to the yellow line? I've got three ascending bull lines. And I really, the yellow one, I don't know if it's going to get under it. I'm getting more and more bullish on hex. Things are, are looking very good in that area. And then I check over my favorite. I am. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, Hex is my favorite. I have a lot of favorite now. I like this technology. And I own this some of this stuff. Like, okay, this is cool. So, yeah. Wow, that's a lot of sideways action. For the Like, this is a brand new chart. So, it's price discovery mode. This is kind of setting the TA that where price could go for the next little while. And I'm actually getting to the point where, uh, you know what? I'm too too engrossed in this to actually talk about price predictions with it I mean TA shouldn't be that challenging you drop a fib chart on it and what does the fib chart say well I'm not saying anything you can read what my screen is saying what a fib chart says so like possible point price highs okay that one that one that one these are targets where in price discovery pump wise okay and as it takes time to do this we'll set trends we'll set some shapes and investors will use that into the next bull run so I'm interested to see where that goes it's fun watching new technology get out and trade uh, however some more news on this and now this is where I'm like you know what I still oh I don't want to do that anymore delete that no more drawing pictures on this I said I've been waiting for this to go to zero and maybe it will maybe it finally will Maybe it finally will. Pulse D. You know why? Hex info. Oh yeah, I'm just going to delete my tweets back to October like I never existed. It needs to be free and on its own. It can't have a founder. I'm going to get a Satoshi way. Oh, okay, after you shield the crap out of it, there's been plenty of volume. People made money. It. That's kind of pump and dumpy vibes, dude. It's kind of really pump and dumpy vibes. So, go to zero. Go to zero. Go to zero. Like, you're, you're alive, you're around, and you don't want to be... So you removed proof of association with your project. Like, that's just... No, I don't delete tweets. I really lost respect on that. The amount of engagement, involvement he was having talking about it some of the good things that were done in it that were interesting that I liked alright I found it kind of funny to watch but I'm actually like no yet it doesn't look like it's bottoming it's gotten past it's resistance like hmm. this is the point where it kind of decides down or yeah it was a bottom Um, we'll see but now this is a community alone thing so I'm like wow alright the founder bailed on it there's going to be no new stuff it's just a token that runs and people are going to appreciate it or not um, I don't think it's that important or really brings that much new cool technology it's a toy with a gimmick ripoff name and now the founder doesn't even want to hang around like Pulse Doge I mean Bitcoin's Bitcoin and Pulse Bitcoin's not Pulse Bitcoin. It's not a coin set model. It's an accounting standards model, so it's not actually Bitcoin. 
Um, Doidge, well, if your founder's not around making stupid dog memes on it, is it really a Dogecoin? Yeah, I don't know. And so, yeah, yeah, it's it, it's still something I'm like, I hate, I don't like, but thank you. Thank you for the free claim. Thank you that it's still worth something in my wallet. That's that's cool. Um, go to zero already, though. You suck. <laughs> That's all, all I can really say about that. Uh, wait, though, as Paul's chain gets closer. This one's a giant L for a chart. Loser, except, hey, it's a free claim that pays you for more the more you wait. Now, if Paul's chain's coming, there may be another claim frenzy. And if there is, there might be another dump. Like, this was back in October when we got some news on pulse chain and thought oh okay well maybe we'll get a test net soon and people start doing some claiming and dumping there's still a lot more that could be claimed all right understood understood so it's nice for them to give this away like the amount of weight you can claim you'll probably have free money as opposed to your gas fees uh, if depending on what uh, projects you sacked for but you can always check and see and hey some free money for waiting around for pulse that's that's nice that's why I liked Paul D in the first place and the coast guy isn't disappearing from his project we'll see what they come out with but I'm I like the level of engagement and I'm curious to what they're building because they're kind of hush hush about it they're not all in your face pumping the crap out of it getting you to buy stuff no they're just organically dropping it like eh, it might be worth something who knows? Uh, of course, I'm very, very caught up with utility in having revenue in a business model and having that give a reason for valuations and put money back into the investment, like stocks paying dividends. So crypto paying dividends, wow, I love that. Being able to drop your coins or just hold your coins and go okay yeah I hold these and I make part of the profits that this whole protocol is designed to earn and people are gonna use the protocol because it's cool because it actually lets them do things they want to do or need to do and makes their lives easier oh you're improving people's lives yeah that usually makes money okay and then you're going to share that money with people because they own these coins. So when you're holding LSUD or L USDL on Pulse Chain and you put USDL or your loan token into the stability pool to reinforce the value there, you earn some of the fees. Okay. I am. You get to earn fees. Power City. You can earn fees. Pulse X. You're getting buybacks from the fees volume. The money they make goes back into the project for investment, guaranteed exit liquidity that doesn't rely on the next person to give you their money, which takes the Ponzi-nomics out of it. That's why valuations are supposed to matter in the stock market and not just a company that constantly runs with more and more debt has an asset that goes up and up and up because oh one day they're gonna be super profitable man look at all the stuff that they've uh, they've built and come with it's like yeah by losing everyone's money for years and years and years and you think there's no price to that you don't think the musical chairs have to stop and eventually people have to go bankrupt because of irresponsible spending that's kind of why I was saying the dominoes have to pop, things have to play out. There's still a capitulation event coming to the market, but how much longer the up mania could go? Like, has this been enough of a correction in the SPX? Like, that period here from November to the end of December. Um, has this been enough of a, a down correction here? to find a little bit of support again and even trade sideways like hey massive rally then correction down and then sideways like it's just it's past the point of any rationality it has been for a while so now 
Yeah, I'm half expecting some more sideways action. And then April, beer, April, May, beer. So yeah, we could still see another rally up. Let me draw a pretty picture. Oh, look, we're trading, we're trading, we're trading. We found some support. Oh, we're back over. And then, yeah, everything's going to be fine, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, it's going to be good. What do you mean? Wait, what's the Fed talk? What's, what's going on? Whoa, what happened in this market? Whoa, what happened? Oh, whoa. Whoa. We'll see what happens. It's kind of almost what I'm imagining right now because Monday yeah this is just a little sharp little fast and the credit event isn't quite there the conditions aren't quite there because of it's looking from sentiment a lot of other factors a lot of things that are hard to quantify but I look at the market and go it's not time yet this is this is not doesn't smell right right some stuff's popping order of things I haven't seen. I wasn't here for the first time, but this just doesn't feel right. So I'm watching like a hawk to see what happens with Paul's chain, with the banks, and with the markets, and I'm going to try and make some more videos while we watch and see, is it back to the end of the world, or is the end of the world back off again? Because bonds falling is the end of the world. Oh, I don't want to draw that. Take that off. End of the world. Yeah, bonds. Off a cliff. E little rally. E. We're gonna have to see how the aggregate bonds are responding. But uh, yeah, we kind of got a back to the end of the world view there, and then suddenly, ooh, because I'm pretty sure I said down here like the day before or whatever, I released a video. Hey guys, Thursday night, just to let you know, like the end of the world it's never the end of the world and then oh look bonds shot up right after that some risk off and if bonds keep going up everything's fine so we'll see as risk off comes back I think we're gonna see a correction of bonds and if bond prices start going up because yields start coming down the TCA ratios of the bigger banks even get better so is risk off coming back that's the big question is normalcy finally returning well, way to tell if the market is trading normally. Hey, look at these statistically built funds that go on back-tested data that trade mathematically based on history. So, normality. They trade on what's normal, what's happened before, the way things have worked in the past, the way they're supposed to work, and that's how it trades. And, oh my god, open the fund doing all right doing all right anomalous year for 2022 fund gets crapped because nothing in the market is working the way it should horrible bear after a horrible bear big run like that an epic rally but still this is where i watch bonds like that's what we're talking about here is bonds watch the rally that this does not look as attractive or as well no because this is basically not trading just on bonds but on conditions and on statistical norms. So as things return to normal, these two funds should do very well. This one even more risk on, risk off. Like this is literally the, the fund based on risk conditions. And so as risk on, risk off behavior normalizes, this fund will do exceptionally well. So I watch this fund to see its performance and it tells me whether the market is at least behaving with rationality. This is my rationality gauge. Row, row. Okay. So gold and lumber are my risk on, risk off indicators, which I believe are row rows a little bit too. Part of it. But row, row is a rationality indicator. So my risk on, risk off indicators, my inflation indicators, my rationality indicators. Uh, also in the rationality and tech sector like look, basically this is my major funds my cornerstone of the market the S&P 500 a little bit of a zoom in looking at some of the tech stocks and then looking and keeping an eye on defense contracting like I break down the thinking here to see how conflict and uh, return to defensives and R&D kind of research for tech how all of that is playing out in the market and 
it's not a pretty picture. It still is not a pretty picture, even though things traded up on basically a need for it. A counterintuitive, things have been too bearish for too long. You can't be that bad because not everything's popped yet. So might as well trade like everything's okay till it does pop or until things get scary enough again. So we got a good scare on Friday, but I don't think it was scary enough. That's basically all, all I can put that into for terms. Now outside of those, back to the play rounds. Let's have a look here. How is Chia doing? Oh man, look at Chia. Giving it a fight. We're going to look at this price here. Because Chia, oof, oof, in that hurt, in that hurt. But Chia here is an uh, interesting product. Like this looks like they finally found a bottom. That would be one bottom, two bottom, really. Um, this this network had a hack even last week. But in order to be hacked, you had to be mining this network and mining a fork of this network on the same computer and then because of the fork there was an exploit so you had to then click on an email you had to actually click on the link and then because you were dumb enough to click on a link it then was able to use an exploit between um, a non recognized fork like I mean Chia just has one chain. That's all they recognize. That layer of updates. If people make changes to it and launch it, it could be one little subtle change. And still, it's its own thing. So those changes could create attack vectors. And then if you run that, that's your own responsibility. And if you're clicking on links, that's your own responsibility. And if you run them together on the same computer, that's your responsibility. So you were dumb enough to click on a link. Then, yeah, an exploit because you're already doing something dumb could be taken advantage of. Other than that, hey, she is cool tech. But let's 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 give this a look here, um, a real look. All, oh, oh, that's an L, a major loser chart, and uh, considering at an all-time high of sixteen hundred. Well, once upon a time there was only one Chia in the market, and then only two, and only three, kind of like the Bitcoin thing. Um. So we can see all the way back to when it came on the market in 2021, there was not very much of it. So demand was high, supply was low, price was high. More and more of it keeps getting mined. And it's, I think, a nice study. Like the way I like the hex distribution model, I like the Chia distribution model. Because it does not take much to run a node. I have three plots currently farming which is not a lot time to win 45 years before I win a coin from farming with only three little itty bitty plots but I'm running a full node cool now the NFTs I got one and I can strip this thing down and turn it into a Chia token so I have a layer one token because it's transmutable you can take your layer one token and turn it into something else. Why? Because it's not an accounting set model. It's not a centralized contract. It's a contract that's individualized, like Bitcoin. There are 21 million Bitcoin contracts that you can trade and pull off the network. That's why a guy was able to lose his Bitcoin on his hard drive. You couldn't lose your Ethereum on your hard drive. You can't take it off the network. It's part of the centralized smart contract model, the accounting set model. Your Bitcoin, you can separate. Chia, I could rip this off the network. Take a handshake protocol. I'd have to sign everything to get it back on the network and get it verified, but I can move it to my computer instead of having it on the network because it's an individual file. And with that, I can also change this file around. I can do some cool little things with it. They're coming along with little updates after little updates, and now I hate NFTs, but I love utility. And if there is proper utility, awesome. You can view someone's F NFT without using OpenSea and think, oh, that's cool. What's its NFT number? I can go look that up. Then I can create an offer because I want that NFT. Maybe I want to buy it for like 50 bucks. And create an offer file specifically for that NFT in my Chia wallet. And then, oh, I can go and drop that offer file 
on that wallet on that NFT. So the owner of the NFT goes, oh, someone just offered me 50 bucks. Do I want it? Yes or no? No, that's too that's too little. Bye bye. Oh, an offer just came in for a hundred bucks. Yeah, all right, fine. I didn't go on offer. See, I didn't have to go shilling this around. Somebody just saw it as my profile pull pic, thought it was cool, wanted it, wanted it. They went to the work of coming to buy it from me, but they could they could come approach me because that stuff's built into the wallet. And that's kind of cool, guys. So when it comes to farming, you can do it all by yourself, or you can pool. Okay, so I run a node, validate the network just on one, not on a spin-off chain, and I don't click on links. And obviously I'm running it on my Windows computer, the one that um, I do my YouTube from. It's, it's separated from my normal crypto computer. So this is a hobby. Like, I don't want to get the network hacked or anything. I still appreciate security, but... This is uh, this is interesting. Oh, and they have a faucet, so I have a little fraction, a little arrow one token. It's like okay, I'm part of the network, and I'm not burning out a CPU to do it. I'm not burning out a GPU to do it. I'm not cranking out a thousand hundred watt million terabyte. Or I am just ramming numbers, but oh, what was it? 110 terawatts. Yeah, I'm not I'm not burning mass amounts of electricity. This is really low. It's a fun hobby. She is cool. All right. Gene, not sure. Sometimes I'm like, man, he could be a CIA spy. Like, that Chia, wouldn't it be funky? Like, come on, cookies. Think about this FUD. Think about it for a moment. So, you know, how, how does the deep state get all of these cypherpunks, cyberpunks? Hmm. Well... What if, instead of Gene trying to bring a Trojan horse of cyberpunks into government by making a chain, because this is kind of the vibe here, all right? Like, hey, we're making our chain. It's compliant, security compliant. Everything's compliant. Uh, so, you know, you can't come after us, and you can just eat it, get bent. Everything's fine here. Go away, Gary. Um, okay, alright, it's Ginsler proofed, so it's a Trojan hearse into the government, get a bunch of programmers and unicorn onesies in the front door, yeah, you want our stuff to run your stuff, okay, but what if, what if, that's the cover story, because actually, yeah, no, the government's trying to infiltrate cypherpunks, because if you read the Chia White Paper, I mean, it's written beyond good for government uh, consumption. Like, there are a lot of terms in there. It's written so well that, like, it gets to the point where it looks like government proposals in the internal ones. <laughs> like, uh, some of those terms are not at all common with... Uh, I mean, it's a little bit of reading. It's my friend. I have a friend, and I'm like, hey, check out Chia. And my friend is one of those people that runs around the deep state, and I hear things like, okay, that's the madness going on today. Um, and so when they see the white paper, because I'm ecstatic about it, and then they're just all up in a huff, like, I've seen this writing before. I don't know. i got to look into this. I'm like, all right. Interesting. They're probably being way too paranoid, but they get paid to be paranoid. So, I, I, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, they get paid to get paranoid, so I'm not jumping right down the bandwagon. But yeah, FUD Club, wouldn't it be funny if Gene was actually like some CIA plant that's uh, trying to actually round in a bunch of cypherpunks and make them work for the government? Ha ha ha, got you. But no, Chia is really cool. It's built in a great mind where, yeah, I don't need a lot of resources or a lot of money, and I can get to be part of the network. It's decentralized beautifully in that form. And the company that they're planning to do with securities is to support this chain, kind of like Linux, written for hackers by hackers. But if you want support for it for your business, 
well, you can buy tech support from their company. You can buy copies of it instead of downloading for free and doing it the cyberpunk way. Well, Chia support. You want to use our software and you're not able to do it on your own, you can pay us for support. Everything else is free. If you can figure it out on your own, it's free. That's a beautiful level of decentralization. So I'm able to hop in and play around. Oh, they actually do have space bucks. Space balls! Okay, I thought they were just... I thought those were some joke tweets. Well, wow, alright. I'll have to look into that. Chia is full of jokes. The Church of Chia? Oh my. Uh, they've got a prayer now. So, I mean, these are some whacked people. They really are. But if you're bored and you want to learn cool new technologies, like, hey, dude, did you ever think it would be cool because the Bitcoin network is so, so slow that maybe you could haul your Bitcoin off of their network? And she is so, so fast because it uses the indexing pro protocols of. BitTorrent uh, through hypertext transfer protocols, <laughs> lickety split. Um, it's so so fast. Wait, so Chia uses a coin set model. You can take your Chia coin off and on the network like Bitcoin. Yeah, and it uses BSL signing or B BVS. Oh man, it's been a while since I looked at that acronym, but it essentially uses a handshake encryption protocol that is not far off from Bitcoin, like almost Bitcoin's handshake protocol, Bitcoin's coin set idea, or, you know, not like UTX and coin set are different, but I mean, this individual file copy mode, a similar handshake, and the speeds of BitTorrent with its indexing, and all of a sudden, wait a minute, are you, are you getting, remember the guy that lost his Bitcoin and dump, it wasn't Bitcoin, oh no, it was Litecoin, no, he spent two and a half million dollars to find 900k. It was worth at least some money, but yeah, loans. He owes 1.6 million dollars still. He found the hard drive this past month, a month ago, and he took it for data recovery. And then it turned out it wasn't even Bitcoin. It was a fork of Bitcoin, which you can haul off the network like that. But imagine instead of hauling it off the Bitcoin network and leaving it on some hard drive to throw in a dump and have to spend money to to recover it. What if you just haul it off the Bitcoin network and then put it on the Chia network and then it's still a Bitcoin? It's an actual, well, maybe not a Litecoin because it was a fork. But anyway, the point is, this coin is still actually the coin it was. Not bridged over, not, not wrapped. It's actually ripped off its original network and transferred over to the Chia network. So, wait a minute, my Bitcoin's still worth a Bitcoin and I can trade it on a faster network? That might actually be possible. And these weird things where, oh, hey, we can mint a bunch of NFTs, but make it so they're not minted yet, like we want to make it a surprise. So we'll stuff all of these NFTs, which were Ch Chia coins, these files, and actually save them like, so, it's a file like, hey, I'm an executable, and it's a file like, hey, I'm just a file folder, like a placeholder. So wait a minute, I can take a bunch of these Chia's, make them executables, and then shove them inside another Chia coin that acts like a file folder. Yeah, you can stuff Chia inside Chia's to make time locks. Yeah, so then it's all minted, it's all set up, but nobody can see what it is, and then at a certain time it releases. Well, that's pretty cool attack. Okay. And wait a minute, so you can stuff things inside of other things, and then you can move other things onto this network. This network becomes all of a sudden a lot more valuable, a lot more versatile, for sure. And versatile, versatility in technology is killer. So, I'm not sitting around buying this, because, yeah, the chart made a giant L, but I don't have to. I just give a little bit of my computer space, I need some more hard drive space. Like I might go actually spend 150 bucks on several terabytes of hard drive space so I can have a few dozen plots and get that 45 years down to like four years or two years or something. Just for fun, run a node and see if I can win a coin or two and what they'll be worth at the next of the bull run. It's a curiosity. Because it's not a huge pump of mental chain, and yeah, they are taking prayers like the Our Father is, oh, um, Our Bram, who art on the blockchain. Um, I don't got like I I'd have to go back and listen, but oh yeah, they 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 spoofed the entire prayer. 
is actually well done. Like, I laughed. I got a good laugh. Like, hang out with the Church of Chia if, as long as you're not, like, um, psychologically vulnerable and gonna join a cult or something. They're funky. They're funky, but they're hilarious. They are. And they're smart. You learn lots of very cool things talking with them. Like, the difference between accounting set and coin set models and, and exactly how time lords and proof of space and time works because I'm on one end of the validating. There's two sets of validating in this because I could be a time lord instead. So instead of trying to win bids for Chia by proof of space, I could be doing proof of time which is that I'm running validator to basically run number generation. Instead... We, no lava lamps here, folks. So the Time Lords are the lava lamps. They do the generation of the bids going, We are looking for hash da 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 to write the block. And then all the rest of us farmers are going, ah, I'm looking my field and I don't have that hash. I'm looking my field and I don't have the hash. Oh, I looked my field and I have the hash. I shall write the block. So there are two sides of this validation, which makes it a little bit interestingly more secure, in my opinion. This is cool. They're building, but this is, like, Solana's a test network that should just be left to die. Just stop feeding it, stop giving it any attention, just let it die. That test net should have never been launched as a main net. It's a test net. But whatever, it got launched, it is what it is. This, yeah, we're not... They're not screaming pumpamental. They're not screaming go buy a bull run. Like, there's no huge gambling available. They just got a DEX, which isn't a DEX. It's more like Matcha XYZ or One Inch. It's a limit order uh, exchange protocol called DEXI. So it doesn't have the full price go up stuff. But, like, they're building away. They're doing some cool stuff. But it's way different. It's very alien from... Pulse chain and EVM. It's not Ethereum compatible because it's not a counting set model. Because of that, we get a lot of differences, and yeah, price went down more and more of it got farmed. But there's enough farmers, it's actually seemingly getting harder and harder to win a bid, as you saw with 45 years. Oh, wait, sorry. There we go. Estimated time to win 45, 45 years. Like, ha ha. That, that's a shortage of supply for the amount of nodes running, which means demand, I don't know. But like Chia, there's no huge pump of mentals. Now if it's bottomed, okay. If it's bottomed, that's cool. And maybe it has. Maybe it finally actually found its bottom at $27 a coin. But there's still more room for it to go down. People panic, crowded events. The community's cool, but it's not like the pump of metal. The community's like, we're going to go spend our money on more hard drives. They're not all about buying and selling, dumping this. I haven't actually looked at the volume that goes through this. So this isn't about the price go up with this one. This one is about the tech. It's a hobby. I'm bored waiting for Paul's chain, and it's nice to be kind of part of the community. Like, I can go and roast them for not knowing Doctor Who well enough, considering everything is basically based off of Doctor Who with this chain. So, uh, I love that. Uh, like, they're fun. They're fun in a horrible bear market. So if you need some opium and just to learn some cool tech or to just joke about some of the most insanely weird things, honk, go hang out with Chia. Now, why does this matter? Yeah, let's go about why this matters. Again, it's only distribution. Making enough grunty noises for you yet? Oh, that's too kind, guys. That's too kind, guys. There's their chart. Now, for some perspective, the the L on Chia, because anybody can earn this through participating in the network 
with what's on their computer without spending any money, without sacrificing any hard-earned crypto tokens. That distribution model, unlike Bitcoin, meaning you have to spend millions and be centralized as a mining company, like, I'm broke over here. I'm doing this on a spare laptop and I'm part of Chia. Cool, I don't have to buy it, I don't have to pay for it, anything. Now, Zen launched with hype. Love the volume trading, people ape into it. Okay, but what's the distribution now with this? Bots. So instead of having to prove that I have hard drive space and limiting well, all I have to do is prove that I'm better at scripting code than you, that my bot is more effective, that I can do these transactions faster, and then I have the gas available. Well, who has lots of gas and good bots? Oh, centralized exchanges. So who are the people minting the most of this? Oh, centralized exchanges. So Zen still becomes very centralized. Okay, and so even with the decentralization, well, you can still mint it for free. You can still mint it for free. Yeah, you can mint a little less of it. So you'd expect this to start getting better. So let's let's play a game here about distribution. Why distribution matters. So Ethereum changed its distribution model. That is so horrible. Ethereum changed its distribution model. So proof of stake. Now, the rich people want to validate. They can prove that they're rich, they can own, and they can prove that they can code, and they're rich, and they can go. And they get to win the bids of the layer one tokens. But Zen and its X1, a proof of work fork. Now, when Ethereum changed over, they were having a lot of issues with the miners and vampire attacks, gas fees, a lot of, a lot of things that were a, a, just a little bit pain in the butt milking the system so when they switched to proof of stake all those miners boom they're out of a job but they still got all that equipment so they launched proof of work and proof of, and uh and eth fair they they flounder they don't do well because still sandwich attacks vampire attacks like come on here and then watch all these bots get you because that's kind of built into the proof of work systems well those chains don't catch any traction but wouldn't it be handy if I were leading a bunch of miners that are now out of work, desperately looking for a chain to get some traction, found a doofus who happened to work for a big tech company but was not important at that company at all in any way, shape, or form, but because it sounds cool, we could use him and use him as a front guy, and we could make this guy who doesn't even really understand the blockchain technology he's pushing be our front piece and mouthpiece to take the heat and everything else and maybe get us some traction on the branding for a chain that'll get people putting money into it so we can take their money not for their wealth not for their benefit just so we can take their money we'll set up a, a huge smart contract which forces the layer one tokens that we love to get more valuable because people are burning it off after buying them for this crap okay and then we'll lie to them about being able to burn this crap for a brand new chain and we'll just make that independence you still gotta buy into the new chain Oh, okay. And then the new chain, we're just going to fork another proof of work. And so if it has glitches, oh, well, we don't care about them. Okay. Um, like, down to the point where, hey, dude, you're trying to get this token started, and you purposely rejected things that would make it harder for bots and centralized entities to be able to take advantage of, to take control of this. You built it so it was easy to get taken advantage of. And then when you look at certain contracts associated with the project, and you see the different things going on in the chains and the things written in the background. It's a pretty impressive building that looks like it's meant for raking dum-dums. Come, spend your money here, and then get whittled away by fees. It's all about making the fees and clipping every little extra cent they can. Whittle you away. Proof of whittled. This is just nasty. And any of these buys, all these people cried. They're all just losing, losing, losing for years laws can change tech can change by the time the minting slows down on this the ARC token standard could be obsolete proof of work could be outlawed 
like way too much time way too much minting and to the availability to the wrong people the richest people with the best bots the wealthiest people with the best bots and oh no the people who write sandwich attacks on proof of work networks they don't know how to write bots those couldn't be the best bots could they there's a huge difference in distribution it matters quality and intent of utility matters just to copy something that's been done before and give it a branding spin that's why I hate Pulse D they're just copying an ERC 20 set copying uh, give it a set like copying a proof of work set I mean everything is a copy of everything like hey yeah uh, Pulse Chain is going to be proof of stake but there are going to be a lot of changes to Pulse Chain from Ethereum there has been a lot of changes this is why it's taken months to get it not just slapped together with hardly ed audited code no scrutinized well designed well thought out code distribution matters so Zen I finally talked about it it's crap everything about it screams I whipped it together like last night's book report homework hoping my teacher doesn't give me an F and I at least get a D a D's not good enough for me guys like I need stuff that is a a plus built and thought out and considerated considered technologies so get out of here Zen hit the road Jack and don't you come back no more no more no more no more I'm not gonna buy you but I'm gonna proudly farm that crap honk um so yeah and then I'm very happy and very proud I bought hex and told everybody to buy hex buy hex buy hex I think I was working and forgot to say buy hex but here I was like yeah I'm buying some hex buy some hex Oh uh, yeah that's the stuff I buy that's what a chart's supposed to do without a stupid excessive amount of waiting costing you time opportunity loss the things you could have done with your money instead like how many wallets you mint oh well you know I minted $200 uh, worth of Zen so it's in a profit I have 215 even in a slow drop here okay good for you now instead of minting two hundred dollars what if you'd swap that two hundred dollars into hex down here well 1.7 up to 7.7 well 3.4 okay 5.1 okay 6.8 okay oh that two hundred dollars would have broken a thousand if you had just bought hex instead of minting zen because your money wouldn't have been gone in minting Zen and holding Zen and hoping in Zen. You would have had the opportunity to put it somewhere where it could have made more money. Ah, uh, okay. Or you could have even put it in this. Good old I am. Now this, that's a that's a butt hurt down here, but I think realistically, I'm gonna have to move this. Oof. We're going to still establish a bull trend. The buy and burns coming on this thing. The token, this is such a brilliant accumulation phase. Like, wow. I can't believe the price is so low. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I got my opportunity. So, I, I'm not going to sit on this. You could also be in at the same price as I am. Give or take a few cents. You, you could get that DCA opportunity if you wanted it. You don't have to. I don't know what you're going to do. I'm not a financial advisor. I am just telling you what I see the markets doing and what I like to do and why things matter to me. And distribution matters. So this is the one and only time I talk about Zen. Goodbye. All right? When you get offers on GitHub where everyone commits their programming work for review... To say, hey, this could be a problem. Bots could take huge advantage of this. Central exchanges could mint too many. Here's one line of code that fixes that. Makes it a patch and makes it more gas efficient. Cheaper to mint. And cuts down on bots. And then you reject it on purpose. 
you reject that help. No good. No good. No bueno. No bueno. If you go on GitHub and offer a line of code that actually improved Paul's chain, you think Richard would use it? Yeah. You try and do that with Jack? You think he's going to use it? No. Now, you go over to Chia and you make a good update, they're going to use it. Willingness to innovate based on things people need and want, not just making it the way you think it should to benefit you the most. There's a difference between altruism and narcissism. I don't charge anyone for money. You reach out and ask DMs and you're not just wasting my time. I answer questions. I don't charge money. I, I, once or twice I've asked for donations because I've been pretty butthurt, but I, this is a hobby. I do this for free. Uh, go ahead. Access. I want to help people. I want to make sure they're making the most informed decisions. I want to make sure they're thinking things out. Okay. Um, there's a big difference between that and going, oh yeah, come, you know, buy my project. What's in it for me? I don't know, but like, I own a shit ton because I wrote the thing. Oh, you just come in to flatter this guy's ego because he could never get it at work because he wasn't one of the top programmers. 21st programmer is not top programmer. Sorry, it's not. It really, really is not. Like, show me a list of his GitHub contributions to Google. What revolutionary tech or software has he ever written? I mean, there are lots of devs that... I mean, how has the 21st worked? His pay scale? Lucky what he was getting paid. And I don't think he was even the 21st. When you go look that up, like, that's wrong. It was a woman. Wow. Okay. Whatever. People fell for it. People wanted to go buy into it. That's their issue. Uh, hex Joker or actual Joker, whatever he's carrying about. I guess he's getting bored with Zen and it being crap and he's trying to come back to the Hexagons. I still haven't blocked him, but I might one of these days. It just feels like he'd count that as a win. The extra effort it goes to go block him. Uh, he'd be proud about it. Um, so he's going to have to get particularly annoying for me to want to have to remove him from my feed that badly as to block him. There are some interesting characters in the community, but by watching some of the people you don't like, you can get a good sense of what's going on in other places. And yeah, it's getting about the time where people are getting frustrated enough with Zen that they're trying to jump back to Hex. Like, eh, whatever. Um, I never left. And, like, I'm Hex, 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 and then things built around Hex, 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 and then more cool tech. Oh, yeah, I got swayed in by a Hexican, Mr. Cookie Monster, who got me over looking at Chia. There's room for the two communities to work together to build some tech that's actually interfaceable between Pulse Chan and Chia. There's room for that. I might talk to some devs that are pushing, and that's where... It doesn't have to be a either or scenario with Pulse and Chia. It could be an and and nand <laughs> scenario. Yeah. Chia and Chia and Pulse Chain could be interfaceable. So I find that cool. And the interfaceability could reinforce the value of both networks, not siphon the value off. Of each other's networks a compounding effect instead of a siphoning effect this stuff excites me obviously distribution it's important I love the fact that for a sacrifice I had a chance to get in I love that the, the way that uh, the bridge is set up and the way everything for fork copying set up that I have my own chance for arranging the distribution I get for my copy of my ethereum chain proof of stake I mean Pulse Chain in some ways is still fairly centralized with rich people having the most portions of it for the biggest sacrifices and then obviously the OA address and I, I do see the value in the land of the uh, benevolent dictators because all of the software is decentralized but coin ownership is centralized but not by centralized exchanges 
is centralized by some big crypto names and an OA. And the OA has shown for years and years and years the positive reinforcement it uh, does by not moving a single coin, not selling a single coin, not bothering a stake, not bothering to do anything, just holding them. They just sit there. Well, yep, it holds them. So it's kind of centralized, but that central figure does nothing like Satoshi. So Satoshi doesn't do anything with the coins. Bitcoin doesn't worry about the Satoshi wallet and call it centralized because of the Satoshi wallet. So, yeah. Um, the OA seems to be as benevolent as the Satoshi. And by that, the rest of it Oh, so, so, so decentralized. No admin keys. Oh, love that. Like, I mean, if I really wanted to run a validator for Paul's chain, I could. Uh, 32 million, that would have been 3.2, th well, about $3,000. Sacrifice. And if we get a good Paul's chain dip, you might be able to grab that for $1,000 or $1,500 um, within the first week. And, wow, that's all it would take to buy up my portion to be able to run a node well that's not so exclusive that only the rich can run it right that's how I feel about it I mean 32 ETH is way more expensive 30 times more expensive than what I'm thinking I might be able to get in on a pulse validator if I wanted so I could run a pulse node like I'm running a Gia node be a part of the network I just I need a newer computer again another one I can isolate because all this stuff should be done on its own independent computers in my opinion should never really be multitasking all of your stuff on one computer so it's a debate I'm running whether or not I want to get into validating Paul's chain nodes but at least it's a decision I can make as a poor pleb and I think that is pretty cool as far as distribution goes again it's only distribution and now the Federal Reserve the Federal Reserve hands out money to only the rich oligarchies for 0% interest so they don't have to pay for it. And then they get to hand it out at like 1%. And then they get to hand it out at like 2%. So the richest of the rich continue to get richer because they're the only ones that have access to the new money supply first off at its cheapest value. That's the system we're running away from. And again, it's only distribution. Distribution matters. Anyways, I finally got around to my Chia vs. Zen video. Alright. You guys, have a great day. And uh, until next time, stay frosty.